You're watching Cycle Talk, Australia's motorcycle show. From sports bikes to motocross to cruisers, we love them all. We ride them, thrash them, test them, and sometimes we even crash them. Welcome to Cycle Talk. On this episode, we ride the Kawasaki Ninja 650. We join Harley Davidson on its 100th anniversary celebration ride. We've got a helmet on test and lots more. Recently, I got to ride the new Road King Special from Harley Davidson in their big ride down the East Coast to celebrate 100 years in Australia. Now, this particular model's had a completely blacked out engine. They've gotten rid of that big screen on the front. They've changed the styling, they've upgraded the suspension to turn the bike from being more of a tourer into more of a bagger. It's a really, really interesting bike, but if you really like it, you might want to get down to your Harley Davidson dealer very quickly. There's very few of them around until the 2018 models arrive in a number of months time. So if you like the look of this bike, get in quick. Moto Marini's back with a new Corsaro, the 1200ZZ, and hopefully, back without the electronics problems that plagued the earlier ones. We really rated the Corsaro when, when they were being brought into Australia a number of years ago, but the company's changed. It's had a list of owners a mile long, and we hope that they can be a bit more successful. However, if you want one, you need to order it from the factory, cough up about 20,000 euros, that's $30,000 at the moment, and then you're probably gonna have to pay for it to get it here too. So we're not gonna see too many in this country, but a very cool looking machine nonetheless. The internet's starting to go crazy with rumours that Ducati is producing a V4 to replace the Panigale at the top of its superbike line. Now Ducati's had a long history of winning races and winning superbike championships, but all that's dried up in recent years and maybe a V4 is what's required to get those trophies flowing again. Ducati's been building V4s for its MotoGP bikes and even built a limited run of, uh, of a production model the Desma Sedici, about a decade ago. So it's not like they don't have any history in building V4s, they just don't have much history selling them. But we think that could really revitalise the top end of Ducati's superbike line. Get this, Jack Miller's copped a thousand euro fine for pushing over Alvaro Batista after the Spaniard knocked him off his bike at the Jerez round of the MotoGP Championship. The pair collided at turn one on the sixth lap when Batista came in way, way, way too hot and just took out Miller. Um, they both crashed, neither were particularly injured, but um, Miller was not happy. Jackass, as Miller's also known, was having a great weekend up until there, running around in the top three, top four, depending on what practice and qualifying we're talking about. And he was doing very well in the race too. So it's not really surprising that he was cranky when, when Batista took him out. Miller went to Batista's pit to clear the air after the event and probably to lessen the fine, uh, but we don't really know what went on in there. In his Red Bull blog, Jack admitted to doing the wrong thing, but he also had a backhanded shot at uh, Bautista, saying that Bautista's been riding in GP longer than Miller's been riding a road bike. We're starting to feel the chill around here at Cycle Talk. The days are getting shorter, the mornings are getting frostier, and even these studio lights aren't keeping me warm enough. In the May issue of Cycle Talk, you'll find a big winter feature. Uh, there's some great ideas there on how to keep warm. To keep your hands warm, one of the most important things you can do, get a set of Oxford hot grips. The five different heat settings, and they'll work in even the coldest temperatures. If you'd rather just keep the wind away from your hands, a set of Barkbuster BBZ hand guards will do the job really, really nicely. They're about 120 bucks. Team them up with a set of five gloves GT2 WP gloves, which I reviewed in an earlier episode, and you'll have a very good combination to keep you warm in even the coldest weather. If you need a new jacket this year, the Speedy Four Seasons is a great jacket for all-round use. It comes with separate thermal and waterproof linings, 
and has CE approved armour in the shoulders and elbows. It looks pretty cool too. If you love your current jacket but you want to make it a bit warmer, what about using Andy Strap's new Helix Icebreaker Mid-Layer Jacket? Mid-Layer clothing is really good at regulating your body temperature and it gives you that option to pull it off and shove it in the backpack if you don't need it. So at $295, this is not a super cheap option, but it is a very, very versatile one and does a great job of keeping you warm in cool weather. Falco's Ariel boots are just what you need to kick ass and take names in June, July and August. They're waterproof, reinforced and have D30 ankle cups for protection. Sweet! Join me after the first broadcast of each episode on Facebook Live, 9pm every Tuesday. Just go to the Cycle Talk page. We take comments, suggestions and the best questions. We try to answer them as best we can and we give away copies of Eyes Wide Open every week. So join us on Facebook, 9pm every Tuesday. Kawasaki has updated its 650 learners in 2017. Reducing the weight and refining the engine has really made these two bikes a pair of cracker quackers. In this week's Wiley X test, we're going to take a look at the Ninja 650L. In 2017, Kawasaki's designed the bike around an all new frame and maximising the low to mid range performance. So the twin spar frame has been replaced with trellis and all up the new frame weighs 15 kilos and contributes to 19 kilos of weight saving on the new model. Unsprung weight has also been shed from the wheels, the front axle and the swing arm which should also improve handling. And although the engine looks largely the same, in bore capacity and stroke, just about everything else is new. So it produces slightly less power, but slightly more torque compared to the previous model. In doing so, Kawasaki joins a long list of manufacturers that go against the old Enzo Ferrari adage that horsepower sells units, but torque wins races. But the learner market's not really about winning races. It's about making the bikes safer and easier to ride. And torque does this. so it gets off the line easier and is much more forgiving if you're in too high a gear. And Kawasaki's got you covered at the other end with a slipper clutch and it's there to prevent the rear wheel from locking up if you change to too low a gear. And the styling remains distinctly Ninja with its attractive bodywork and integrated indicators. In 2017, we see an X-pattern LED tail light and sophisticated instruments. The main learner-friendly features here are the programmable shift light and a gear position indicator. And up front there's also a three-way adjustable screen and it provides pretty good wind protection. The screen will take about 10 minutes and a hex key to adjust, though I think it's a case of finding out what your preference is and leaving it. And get this, the radiator fan has been tilted 90 degrees and it blows the hot air downwards. So when you stop at the lights, you feel cool and comfy, it's great. There's also adjustable levers, and it's this attention to detail that makes the Ninja 650L a great everyday bike. And the upright riding position is certainly a factor here too. The low seat height and easy to reach bars will suit most, and allows the rider to provide safe and reliable input. Stopping the bike is a pair of 300mm discs up front with two piston calipers. ABS is standard, and I can't really fault the brakes. They pack a fair punch and the ABS doesn't click in without feeling intrusive. The suspension's well set up for daily riding too. It's not too firm and it's not too plush, but it is pretty basic kit. Talk with your local Kawasaki dealer to set up the rear preload and that'll keep the rear shock in its Goldilocks zone. When the speeds increase to that 80 to 90 mark, there's no need to bang down a gear or two. The Ninja will pull away, but not too far. The engine changes and short gearing give the Ninja a tendency to sign off earlier, although it's not a bad thing. The only real criticism I've got from this bike is that vibrations tend to creep in north of 5,000 revs, and it's not a problem at those everyday speeds. But if you push the bike a bit harder, or you sit at the freeway limit, it'll have a tendency to become a little bit tingly, and I think Kawasaki can improve the bike in this area. So I got the chance to push the bike pretty hard in the twisties, and tipping the bike over from side to side really allows you to experience what motorcycling is all about. And in that way, the bike's kind of like a gateway drug. 
except it's safe, it's confidence inspiring, and it won't give you the munchies. So I've spent two weeks with the bike, and all I can think is, what a great learner bike, and what a great returner bike too. Most people could jump straight on this bike after getting their L plates and start building their skills quickly. The list of learner-friendly features is as good as it is long. It's available in two colours and prices start from $9,999 plus on roads. Go check one out at your local Kawasaki dealer. This feature is brought to you by Wiley X, absolute premium protection. 100 years ago, Morgan & Wacker became the first Harley-Davidson dealer in Australia. If that's not a good enough excuse for a party, I'm not sure what is. Happy birthday, Morgan Wacker. Happy birthday to you. Way back in 1917, Arthur Davidson set sail for the other side of the world in an effort to take Harley Davidson to the fledgling nation of Australia, and in the process partnered with Morgan & Wacker Motorcycles in Brisbane. And the rest, they say, is history, with Morgan & Wacker being the Queensland importer for decades, right up until Harley Davidson set up its local office, and the shop remains a retailer today. In recent years, Australia has become the motor company's biggest export market, and it's the passion for the brand that drives much of those sales. For me, Harley represents four things. Freedom, individuality, a little bit of rebel, and the mateship. And you can um, believe the mateship is fantastic, and that's what brings us all back. The festivities began at Morgan & Wacker Motorcycles in Brisbane with an evening party for the faithful. And then the following morning was the street party, where everyone was welcome before the 100th anniversary ride commenced. Harley Davidson invited Cycle Talk to ride part of the 100th celebration ride down the east coast of Australia. A ride from Brisbane to Melbourne via Sydney and Canberra. A mix of celebrities, journalists, dealers, HD staff and HOG members mostly did sections of the trip to enjoy that unique camaraderie, almost unique to Harley Davidson. Currently I'm at Gasoline Alley. Uh, there's hundreds of people here to celebrate 100 years of Harley Davidson in Australia. There's hundreds of bikes. The rumble of big V-twins is in the air everywhere um, and it's a beautiful day. They've got guest speakers, lots of famous people, lots of camera crews rolling around. It's a big day for Harley and a big day for Harley in Australia. Welcome to the Coffs Coast. We're just parked here at the BP South Boambi, or affectionately known as the Wimpy. We've got the crew from North Coast V-Twins. My name's Lars from A1 Coffs Coast Tours and North Coast V-Twins. We're heading off on this great tour here from Coffs Harbour to Port Macquarie, off to the Casa Grain Winery for lunch. We've got a group of lads here. There's about 40 bikes, of course, all the brand new Harley-Davidson range in the Milwaukee 107. 
it's a fantastic opportunity to get out and ride. Harley Davidson to us means camaraderie, social, friends, and of course the freedom of getting out on the road, clearing the head. Today, beautiful sky. If you're ever back here on the Coffs Coast, make sure you drop in and see us at North Coast V-Twins. Casa Grain Winery was our last scheduled stop before Newcastle, so it was great to stop, have a very pleasant lunch and talk about Harley Davidsons and everything that goes with them. It's a beautiful spot there in Port Macquarie, lovely food, lovely atmosphere, it was also great to hit the road again. Cycle Talk had to leave the ride at Newcastle, but we'll leave the final word to Harley-Davidson Australia's CEO, Nigel Keogh. We've had some great times and some great parties and rides over the last few days as we've left Brisbane, Morgan and Awaka, the home of the first dealership in Australia. Back in 1917, we had uh, Arthur and his wife visit Australia and open our brand new dealership. Fantastic riding, but we've got a hundred years of fantastic times ahead of us in the future. Looking forward to uh, talking to you more again. Thanks very much from Harley Davidson Australia. This product review is brought to you by Avon Tyres. This is the new Iro Garage Carbon Open Face Helmet. Now it's an ultra compact um, urban helmet is how they're marketing it. So of course the first thing I did with it was go touring because you can use a helmet for anything if you, if you really want to. So the idea with this helmet is that it's, it's very close fitting. It's quite compact in its, in its design and being carbon fiber make, gives it that extra strength with, with super lightweight. It's a good quality helmet. It means it's got a completely removable washable liner, but this, it's, it looks like it's leather around here, so it goes really, really well with classic motorcycles and, uh, you know, modern classics, like a lot of the Harleys and things like that. So it looks really good and it fits in really well with that. It's also got a reflective trim for night time, things like that. It comes supplied in the box with this uh, visor slash goggles, whatever you want to, however you want to describe it. And that slips over with the elastic band has a clip at the rear just to position. And gives you that extra bit of weather protection um, if it's cold, wet, uh, or you want to use it at night time with a bit of eye protection there, that's there. Now there's other options available. You can get retro bubble, bubble visors and peaks and things. They're all available through Aero as well. You can keep it, um, it's very easy to pop the, um, pop the lining out there's just a couple of clips and then you just pull it out, give it a wash, put it back in again. The fastening is a micrometric adjuster. So you just slide it in until it's tight and then that's it. And then to undo it, you just grab that and pull it out. It's got this other little hook here to lock it if you want to lock it to your bike, if you've got a bike with a helmet lock. So that's the Iro uh, Garage Carbon uh, available right around Australia and um, and very, very lightweight, very, very comfortable. Um, check them out and, uh, and I think you'll find it very shockingly light actually, 700 grams, probably the lightest helmet I've ever used. Now on the Harley Davidson 100th anniversary ride down the East Coast, I combined this helmet with these Wiley X sunglasses. Now I've done a little piece on Wiley X in a previous episode, so I won't rehash that completely, but I got these um, from Wiley X. I then sent them to Goggle Man over in South Australia with my prescription and they made up prescription lenses to suit 
my eyes. So just to, re, uh, just to go over the, the main features, um, the straight arms mean it's very easy to get inside a helmet and this uh, seal here is foam on this side, rubber on this side, it clips into the sunglasses really quickly and easily converting what's a conventional pair of sunglasses into something that, that keeps the wind and the dust and the bugs out from your eyes. Creates a nice seal, makes an open face helmet much more comfortable to use and uh, I really, really like these new Wiley X's. They came with um, straps and cleaning and a nice bag. That one's, these ones are called the Gravity, Gravity model in a bronze. They're available in different colours. There's a huge range of Wiley X's to suit motorcycle riding. Check out their website. Check out Moto National's website for more information about the Iro. This feature is brought to you by Speedy on track. We get our inspiration for building bikes from a lot of places. But if your inspiration comes from a homage for your grandfather, you better get it right and you better make it number one. When you get on your bike, you forget about everything else. You forget about all your problems. You're riding the bike, you're having a ball, and you feel like a little kid again. My bike journey started from when I was a kid and I wasn't allowed to have a motorbike till I was 14. And I bought a DT360 and I kick-started the bike, fired it up and it was like I was a tiny little fart of a kid. It was like so much power, it was unreal, I loved it. My grandfather used to race motorbikes right back as far as 1915. They used to do this race from Sydney down to Melbourne and it was a very famous race and my grandfather used to do that and they used to race the Bathurst motorcycle meeting. As I was growing up I just rode bikes just for fun and then I got really heavily involved in car racing and a good mate of mine Ian Luff used to say to me, you know, if you want to be number one you've got to think number one. When I won the championship in 2009, this bike got built afterwards. It was only going to ever be number one. What I love about this bike when I do ride it, it's like that I've gone back in time. And although I never rode with my grandfather, I feel like I'm riding his bike. And I know his bike was from a long, long time apart. But that's why I've done the tribute Norton bike, because he rode Norton, real Norton. And I sometimes feel like He's riding with me. It's a 2007 Kawasaki. It's electric start and everyone thinks it's a real old school vintage bike. And we pull up at Bald Hill and people tell me, oh, that's a lovely Norton you've got there. And I said, no, it's not a Norton. It's a Kawasaki W650. And some people I even have to show them the ID plate because they don't believe me. And then they go, oh, yeah, you're right. The three things that I love about this motorbike is the fairing, the tank, and the seat, and the, the bobtail. What would my grandfather think of this bike? I think he'd love it. I really do. Inspiration will take you so far, but that's only where the journey begins. So get out there and ride it.